Howdy everyone, this is Tommy Sides, an American independent missionary over here in sunny South Africa and I'm just wanting to greet you all today and say a big howdy to y'all and I want to tell you today that my message is right from my heart because I see what's going on in America and around the world as I'm over here. We're living on a farm uh, out here and I'm able to just kind of like look as an observer as what's going on and there's a lot of deception uh, I, I won't go through it all but the MSM and different ones even government agencies liberal governments uh, communist governments they're all trying to to pollute our minds and they're trying to steal our liberty is what it is and I believe this COVID-19 thing is, more than anything, it's, it's designed by the devil to condition people to take away their rights. So that when the Antichrist does come and show up in, in, in the near future, whenever that is, people already be, will already be conditioned. You know, already we're being told we can't even go to a drive-in church and stay in our car and worship the Lord. We can't drive to a beach and stay in our car and watch the sun go down without a thousand dollar fine or being threatened to go into jail. So you see, liberties are being taken in the name of a virus that by all accounts is really nothing more than a glorified flu. That's what I've read and that's I mean, it's, it's serious now, there are people, but it mostly affects the old and the infirmed and those that have weak immune systems. It's not like the, the 1918 pandemic that where 50 million people died. And they want to just let this thing just keep going and going and going. They don't want to get back to work. They want the economy of the world to go down. They want a depression, they want a crash. It's crazy. And we need to wake up, friends. We need to wake up. And we need to be in prayer and fasting over this situation. Jesus was in crowds all the time. In Luke 8, 42, the Bible says in the NIV, as Jesus was on his way to heal somebody, the crowds almost crushed him. They almost crushed him. Uh, the NASB says they pressed against him. The King James says they thronged him. NLT says they surrounded him. Jesus was surrounded. He was pressed up against. He was crushed in a crowd. Talk about social distancing, huh? We need to move on. In the 1918 pandemic, the next year, 1919, 1920, you don't see news reports of the time where people still walked around with masks. No, they just moved on in life. That's what we need to do. We, yes, we do need to take precautions and this and that, but we need to do it in a sane way because we can't let the economy of the world be destroyed, right? And I think that's one, another plan of the devil. In order to bring in the mark of the beast, where that no man can buy or sell unless he has the mark, you have to have total disruption of the economy, of the world. And you look around, the world as a whole, never in the history of the world, has the entire planet been still. Talk about the verse that says, be still and know that I am God. <laughs> Amen? I mean, we are still. So, but we need to wake up. We need to wake up. Ephesians 6.12 says this, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and principalities and powers of the darkness of this age and the spiritual wickedness in high places. We don't wrestle against just flesh and blood. Yes, we do wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle not just against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of the darkness of the world. So whether or not in China, in that lab, whether that infection, that virus was released uh, premeditatedly or it was an accident. 
You can bet your bo bottom dollar that the evil forces, the demonic powers of this world are in control and they, they allowed this to happen. And Ephesians 2.1 says something interesting, that the, the, the devil is the prince of the power of the air. And viruses are transported by air. He's the prince of the air. He, he, he can control things more than what we give him credit for. Now Jesus and God are almighty and nothing can happen outside the time frame. God has a time frame. But he, Jesus also said about the last days that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. He knew it. He knew. So Jesus actually and God the Father are shortening the days because we're going to end up killing ourselves. And their only nuclear weapons could, could totally destroy all flesh on the earth, right? So let me ask you a question. If the whole world comes to a standstill because of a glorified flu, how much more is the world going to come to a standstill one day in the future when by accident or by some evil design of a terrorist or group or nation, uh, uh, even a small nuclear device is blown up in a city somewhere and a million, two million, five million, ten million people the next day are dead. Do you think life is just going to go on happy-go-lucky? Or do you think the whole world is going to also on that day come to a standstill and new laws are going to talk about martial law. You think martial law is bad now friends? I've got a song on my album, Stranded No More. It says, dark days are coming. And when Trump first became president, man, I was like, man, I don't know if I want to release this song because it looks like good things are coming down the pike. And because he's such a great president. But he's been put there by God to slow things down, to, to just be a conduit for God to work in the world to just so that when when President Trump is no longer our president down the road could he be our last great president could he be our last president you know the number seven is really big in his life he was 70 years old seven years 70 years seven months and seven days old on his inauguration day and seven is the God's perfect number and it means completion it's deep. Okay, so the Antichrist is coming soon. But when he comes, that doesn't mean I don't believe, and there's a lot of scriptures and I don't have time now to go into it all, but we might be going through the whole tribulation, friends. You need to get ready. Yes, like Keith Green used to say, pray for pre-trib, but prepare prepare for post-trip. In other words, pray that you might be spared and you're not going to go through anything and, and that the, all these uh, pre-trib preachers are correct. You know, Pray that when Jesus comes back, we're all going to get raptured. Yeah, pray for that. But look, you better pray also and prepare to go, go through. You need to be watchful and you need to be a warrior like Ephesians chapter 6 talks about, okay? In 2 Thessalonians 2.8, it says, And then shall that wicked one, that's the Antichrist, be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. See, when the Antichrist is revealed, he's going to have power for a number of years in the world. But when Jesus comes back, 2 Thessalonians 2.8 says, that at the moment that Jesus comes back, the very brightness of his return, the very breath of his mouth is going to destroy the Antichrist and his armies. So that kind of messes up the doctrine that says, you know, that we're going to have the Antichrist after everybody gets raptured. Because when Jesus comes back, it says when Jesus comes, the Antichrist is going to be history. But we need to be warriors of the faith, okay? Read read Hebrews chapter 11. Talks about 
faith and keeping your faith and by faith all these people did all these great things and I've got that chap uh, chapter 11 I've got that on YouTube go ahead and check it out and share it chapter 11 uh, also I wanted to share real quickly 2nd Peter uh, 310 look what it says here it says but the day of the Lord will come like a thief the heavens will disappear with a roar the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be burned up then in verse 11 it says since everything will be destroyed in this way what kind of people ought you to be Peter asked that. What kind of people? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. There again, time. We can speed the coming of Jesus Christ, but we need to be in prayer. We need to be fasting. The church needs to take charge. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of blood of Jesus, I just pray over you, wherever you're at, that the Lord will make you a warrior, that God will give you that Ephesians chapter six armor. Take on the full armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. The helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one. Hallelujah. I've got a song on my album called Devil, Your Days Are Numbered. And you know what? They are numbered. His days are numbered, and we need to realize that. Hallelujah. So, I hope you've enjoyed our message today. I hope it's encouraged you. I wish I could just be there and give you a big hug, <laughs> but I guess I'd be breaking the law if I did. <laughs> anyway, smack that bell and subscribe to our channel, and keep abreast of what we're doing here, and pray for our ministry. We have a big vision. We've got our album, Stranded No More, out, and uh, 18 tracks on that album. Something for everybody. There's country, classic rock, worship. There's even a jazz song on that album, but it's all filled with the, with the word. Amen? I'm a word man. Uh, we've got a word ministry. So if you love the word, and you love the word in music, check out our album, Stranded No More, and support our ministry in prayer and financially. We love you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I must say goodbye now. My time is finished, but I will see you again. Keep in touch and keep looking up for our redemption is drawing nigh. God bless. Love you all. Bye.